love. I see matches in the kingdom. I see hunters slaying demons. I see fire on this earth coming down like you were shaming. I see prophets rising up, prophesying scriptures cut. I see Christ, he coming back. Man, he black, he look like us. I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. A hey, shalom Israel, most high in Christ. Bless. Hey, welcome to Precept Upon Precept, your late show. Hey, look, we your host. I'm Officer Mikael. Officer Micah. Officer Eray. Officer Malachi. Hey, look, we got a fire show for y'all. Put up the thumbnail for me. Put up the thumbnail. Ceasefire. Gaza genocide. No peace in the Middle East. Y'all see your boy uh, Benjamin Netanyahu in the foreground, in the background, you see war. Why? Because they are annihilating Gaza. But y'all going to see, they, 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 they having these little talks about, is it going to be a ceasefire? Meanwhile, they continuing to drop bombs on Gaza. So look, we're not going to hold the show up. We're going to get right into it. And we're going to go to Officer Micah in the Watchman Report. Hey, Shalom, Israel, most high in Christ. Bless. Good evening. I don't want to hold up the show. There's a lot of heat coming tonight. Let's get it. New York lawmaker vote to scrap states antiquated. They meant antiquated. They messed me up by T team, damn devil. Antiquated adultery ban. So they're looking to uh, scrap the adultery ban. Lord help us. We in the we're last days. Next article, please. Biden officials worry Iran may hit targets inside Israel as revenge for killing general. That's a three minute read. There's some good stuff in there. Some good stuff in there. If you like war, check it out. Next article. Fact check. Kyle Rittenhouse allegedly failed. I think he, Kenosha Taylor, he went and shot them people, and then he started crying. Y'all remember him? Uh -huh. like he, was, like he saw no, no, no sympathy. Fact check. Kyle Rittenhouse allegedly failed military interest exam so badly he's banned from serving in Marines. Here's what we know. He can never serve in any military branch. A little psychopath. Bricks. Russia doubles gold and foreign currencies to uproot U.S. dollar. Yes, they try to uproot that dollar. Y'all, Russia's not playing. They not playing. Next article. They trying to uproot the dollar. Meanwhile, the former protests are reaching Canada, particularly in Quebec, where protests are gaining momentum in recent days in the, fa in the face of of the crisis in the sector. So farmers, they're not farming. they protesting in the streets. they spraying manure. they wasting a million dollars worth of fuel. You name it, they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Look up, look, see, look, this, these are what the farmers are doing right here. So I'll give a little, give y'all a quick little um, video. This is what farmers are doing right now. Instead of farming, that's what they're doing. Millions of dollars of equipment. They're not farming, they're protesting. They're protesting. So the farmers are protesting. BRICS is, um, Russia's doubling gold to uproot the dollar. Uh, hey, stay, stay, hey, y'all stay praying. And this concludes the Washington Report. Hey, 
Shalom Israel. We back, we back, we back. So look, hey, that was in Canada with the farmers. Yes, sir. Say, hey, look, y'all seen it? We we covered them when they was in Europe. Now they're gonna move to the Western Hemisphere. It's getting closer to home. Getting closer to home. So look, hey, give me uh video number eight. Let's start with number eight. Video number eight. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, y'all. Video number eight. What's all right? Let's go. And I have a question. Is an arms embargo and sanctions on Israel the only way to prevent a genocide in Gaza? Let's get to the bottom line. After half a year of continuous bombing, Israeli leaders say they are still far from stopping the war in Gaza. Israel's allies say it's a legitimate war because Israel faces a threat from Hamas and is acting in self-defense. But international law experts say something different. They say nothing justifies what's been going on, whether it's Israel's killing of so many innocent people, its use of food as a weapon of war, or the decimation of all civilian life in Gaza. No schools, no homes, and soon no hospitals. So what can be done to stop the death and destruction? And what damage is being done to the credibility and legitimacy of international law itself the longer this war goes on? Today we're talking with Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Palestinian Territory occupied since 1967. Francesca, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I am looking forward to this conversation. Look, you were recently presenting your report at the UN Human Rights Council, and you stated that the threshold indicating the commission of the crime of genocide has been met, and you called for an arms embargo on Israel. Can you go into greater detail about what that threshold is. Absolutely, and thanks for having me. Uh, I've been studying what has happened in Gaza and to Gaza for the past five months, uh, or five months. And uh, I didn't start this investigation thinking that I would conclude that Israel has committed the crime of genocide or acts of genocide but eventually I couldn't do otherwise. Because first of all, I've studied the acts that um, Israeli forces have committed, mass killing, mass infliction of uh, physical and bodily harm, to an extent prevention of birth, and the creation of conditions that would lead to no other uh, outcome than destruction and deaths and the impossibility to continue civil life in Gaza. And I've said, which could, and all these constitute uh, genocidal acts if supported by the intent to destroy the people in Gaza in full or in part. And I found this intent, not only as it had already been amply documented by the South Africa legal team before the International Court of Justice a couple of months ago uh, through the oral statements that had been made uh, by people with command authority in, in Israel, political and military leaders, uh, but also emerging from the conduct of soldiers on the ground who had internalized, absorbed, and acted upon those words, those orders, uh, like the call... The, the, the evocation of Amalek, go Amalek, this, go, destroy all the Amalek, um, and including women and children, or there are no innocent people in Gaza, or we have to eradicate uh, everyone who's Hamas, and uh, eventually no, no one is innocent in Gaza. This has reverberated on the actions of soldiers, infantry on the ground, or those who have bombarded and destroyed the 70% of the Gaza civilian infrastructure. Um, but what is the most important finding in my report is what I call the humanitarian camouflage of Israel's genocidal logic. I argue that Israel has not denied the, all these, uh, the killing and the mass destruction. It has just <laughs> justified it as in compliance with international humanitarian law. For example, the use of human shields. Israel has used human shields as a 
as a, a concept that can be expanded ad infinitum. So everyone was a was a was considered a human shield. But this has been done by Israel in previous wars in 2008, 2012, 2014, 2022, 2023, and it had been demonstrated either a fabrication or an excuse. And this time was not different. Every so time. Not, right, uh, so. The first thing she says I want to deal with is uh, the Israelis, these imposters, calling uh, Ishmael Amalek. Let's see who Amalek is in the scriptures. Can I go to, let's go to Genesis chapter 36. I want verse 1 first, and then we're going to drop to verse 16. Yes, sir. This is the book of Genesis chapter 36 and verse 1. Uh huh. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. So Esau is Edom. So let's see. Let's see. Drop down to verse 16. Let's verse see 16. what the Bible say. Duke Korah, Duke Gatham, and Duke Amalek. And Duke who? And Duke Amalek. Read verse 1 again. Verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau, who is Edom. And one of the dukes of Edom is Amalek. Hey, y'all can put those pictures up. Put those pictures on the screen. Let everybody see who Amalek is. Yeah, the small head people. Look at this. Look, look, look. Hey, hey, also the right. phylacteries. Hey, go back, go back. Let's, let, let, let. That is in... Uh, Ain't no way in hell that's God chosen people. Hell no. Nah. It can't be God's chosen people. And if but, I, what I you got? Just get a precept just to describe what... Esau Amalek looked like because we just read uh, Genesis 25 25. We just read that uh, Esau Edom is Amalek. Let's see what they look like in the Bible because they call in the Ishmael Amalek. But let's see what Esau looked like. Read that for me real quick. Genesis 25 25. Let's see what Esau looked like according to the Bible because the Bible clearly describes Esau. Read that real quick. It's the book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. Read. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. So this is going into the description of Esau when Esau was first born. We look at these pictures. Go through the pictures again. Let's show some more. Look how his blood show forth through his skin. Go ahead. And they call his name Esau. Esau. Show me another picture. Look how hairy he is. At the end of the day, they red. Those are red people. You hey, understand? Go back. Go back to the little boy. Read that scripture again from the top. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So not only was his skin red because his blood showed forth in his skin, he had red hair. And look at this little Amal Amalekite devil. <laughs> look at this little Amalekite devil, how he looks. That's supposed to be God's chosen people? Hell no. But can't be. Scroll through the picture some more. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Boy, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> Keep scrolling. Boy, ain't no way. Come on. These people are evil as hell. Boy, look at this. Read, keep reading. And after that came out his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's hill, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Notice they didn't describe Jacob. The reason being is Jacob looked like everybody else from the dust of the ground. Right. Now, the other thing I wanted to deal with is how they twisted humanitarian laws. The uh oh, everybody in in in, in Gaza. Is Hamas, so they were using people as human shields, so they were collateral damage. Give me Psalms 94 and 20, because this is what this devil does. This is what the devil does. Why is this? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Which frameth mischief or sin by a law? This is what Amalek is over there doing. They're framing their mischief by law. They're twisting laws to say it's okay to commit genocide. 
And then they, they then they try to use the Bible to back themselves up, calling them Amalek. Again, twisting law. You like you got something, Officer Micah? Yeah, Job chapter uh, 9, verse 24. Bring it out. I posted a quick video. She said something in the beginning. She said, how are these people going to be stopped? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we, I don't think we're going to, we'll get a strike for it. Okay, yeah, I, I want to play a quick, quick video. The brother did, a, did an excellent point. Yeah, that's it right there. That's the video. But read that real quick, Job chapter 9, verse 24. Yes, sir. That's the book of Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Come on. The earth. Is given into the hand of the wicked. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So you really got to think, how were you able to just flood weapons into a country? And then you just say, hey, well, this people going to be this people. This is what they do. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, just play that quick. Was it like two minutes? Play quick. Real quick. Just play a video. I don't want to take too much time. Because he said, how are you going to get this? The, how, how is these people going to be stopped? Watch this. This is how. Contribute, say something. You want me to say something? Fine, I'll say something. You, you people, you're not a race, you are a virus. Oh, oh, oh. you destroy the world. Uh oh, everything beautiful, you poison, you drag us from our homes, you rape our daughters, murder our sons. You crack our spines and do all you can to break our will. You stab us. Then you put the knife in our hand and tell us it's our fault. Ain't that what they do? Ain't that what they do? This is what they do. Hey, we need to drop some bombs. I know we don't have, we don't, we don't have that. No, we building up. We building up our team, but we need to drop some bombs on that they one. They bombing the hell out of these people over there now. We're getting the most, that's the Lord doing it. But then they'll tell the people, we y'all using them for human shields. Everybody's a mice. Uh They're all bad. We Play on. We almost done. I'm almost done. I'm going to get back. I'm going to lean back. And if you don't do it yourself, you stand by, close your eyes, and pretend there's nothing wrong. And then you pray to your God. To silence our screams so that you can enjoy the happiness that we built for you with our blood. But it's not your fault. It's the only way you know how to be. You knew I was a snake. Y'all know I was a snake. That's the only way they know how to be. And our people think that they can love them, pray for them, join hand in hand with them. That's the yeah, only way no. they, the Lord fitted them for destruction. That's the only way That's they were right. designed to be that way. And the, the brother said, it's not your fault. That's how you were made. Play on. We're almost done. I'm almost done with this. And the only thing that will change anything is if another virus comes along and does to you what you do to us. And I hope that happens. Very soon. Well, this evening obviously hasn't gone as I'd hoped. All praise to the Most High. You can drop it. Isaiah fourteen twenty one. The Most High said, "Prepare slaughter." Oh. They think they think you. They really think they get in the way. Our people think they think that they get in the way. These people think they are getting away with what they doing to people. Read that real quick. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter fourteen and verse twenty one. Read. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. You not gonna get away, Esau. You not getting away from the Most High. You doing all this wickedness in the earth now. You not getting away. Read on. That they do not rise. They do not what? That they do not rise. So that's why he said uh, another virus is going to come and, and they're going to wipe they behind smooth out. That's going to be a beautiful day. Like, is this the, was that the man? Was that the man that was doing all like about like a, a, a blimp? Bloop. That was the man. <laughs> no more. All praise to the most high. Hey, get Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 2. Let's get some more on there right there. Let's make my teeth white. Man. Make my teeth white. It's spirit of the Lord. Read that. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge? 
will thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. The Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, is going to judge the bloody city. Who got more blood on their hands than Esau? Who got more blood on their hands than Babylon? Who got more blood on their hands than little Satan? I'll wait. Read it again. Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. All her abominations will be shown. All her abominations are being shown right now. Go to video number 10. Let's get number 10. All praise to the most high. Video number 10. Let's get it. Continue to expose these devils. And it's time. It's time that these shameless politicians are shamed publicly. The hypocrisy exposed publicly. Secretary of State, I mean, you've expressed uh, outrage today and, and in recent days about the death of those seven international aid workers. Eloquent outrage. Uh, but it begs the question. Um, there have been uh, hundreds of humanitarians killed in Gaza over the last six months. Dozens of journalists. Many people who have been waving white flags and have still been shot down by IDF forces. I mean, where was the outrage then? And why then didn't you offer to, to uh, reshape American policy if necessary? Why only now? Is it just the, the passports so of the... To give the backdrop of this, the question was asked about the seven humanitarians that, uh, that were killed from World Kitchen. The question is being asked, why was there not outrage with all the humanitarians that are being killed in Gaza? Those humanitarians are the ones they so-called are using as human shields, by the way. So let's, let's continue to play the video. Held. So our Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, was in Washington today where he met his counterpart, American counterpart, Anthony Blinken, and both of them addressed media. And as usual, there were a um, few questions from uh, certain reporters about the situation in Gaza and the alarming cases of uh, humanitarian crisis. So, uh, uh, you know, the first of all, you know, the, the, both these gentlemen, uh, they were they appeared very keen to blame Hamas for everything. I mean, if uh, their shamelessness has absolutely no end, listen to them. I, I would just make the point that ultimately the people responsible for holding these hostages are Hamas. They could release the hostages now. Um, I'm not involved in the minutiae of the negotiations, but I know you know very big offers have been made by Israel to release loads of prisoners from their prisons in response to hostages being released and you know we need the hostages to come home uh, we need the aid to get in and it's a mass more than anyone else that are standing in the hey, way of that. pause that real quick the title of this video is his hypocrisy exposed right the whole argument is hamas hasn't released the hostages and that's why they bombing them right gaza the gaza strip in the west bank are pretty much open air prisons where all these people are being held hostage by Israelis. Hypocrisy much? Play the video. We have our, our teams working on this 24 seven. We're working as you know, closely with uh, Qatar, with Egypt, with Israel. Um, Bill Burns has been doing extraordinary work um, on this. Um, many of us have been deeply uh, deeply engaged, working with the uh, with the governments in question. Uh, we have an offer that's on the table now to Hamas that is very serious and um, should be accepted. Um, Hamas could move forward with this immediately and get a ceasefire that would benefit people throughout Gaza as well as, of course, get the hostages home. Uh, I think. Uh, the fact that it continues to not say yes is a reflection of what it really thinks about the people of Gaza, uh, which is not much. I'm sorry, also. Can I get a scripture real quick? Let me get Psalms. Don't apologize for getting scriptures. Let me get Psalms 58 and uh, 2, man, because I, 
I, I don't believe a word that these damn devils saying. I, I don't. I just don't. Nobody believes them, bro. Read that real quick, because at the end of the day, they... Let the scriptures talk. Read that. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 2. Read. Yea, and heart, ye work wickedness. Uh-huh. Yea, weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Right. The Read. wicked are estranged from the womb. So the wicked are estranged from the womb. At the end of the day, they're a good thing. Lie to your face. They saying we trying to... uh. You know, we want our people back. You don't want your people back. You got an alternative motive. You, matter of fact, you probably told uh, Hamas, <laughs> keep them. <laughs> keep them, you know what I'm saying? And they going back saying, yeah, we trying to get our people back. Nah, Hamas, you keep them, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you dying, and whether you give them back or not, we going to bomb you. I read on, though. They go astray as soon as they be born. Uh-huh. Speaking lies. You cannot trust the damn devil. You cannot trust your enemy. You cannot trust your oppressor. He has lied to you about your history, right? What else has he lied to you about? He lied to you about your nationality. He actually took your damn nationality. You understand? It's just speaking lies. Right? Read on. Verse 4. Are you on verse 4? Yeah. Matter of fact, go to uh, Habakkuk chapter uh, 2 and verse uh, 4. Because at the end of the day, he's not right. You know, uh, it's a saying. If it ain't, if it if it's white, it ain't right. Mm -hmm. Read that. Read that. It's the book of Habakkuk, chapter two, and verse four. Read. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright his in him. His soul is not lifted. His soul ain't right in him. How you can kill babies? You understand? Innocent children. You can take a people from their homeland and tell them that they something that they not. How you can do that? You can, you know what I'm saying? Chop off the hands of infants. Your soul ain't right. Mm -hmm. All right? I land my plane. Hey, I got to mess with my officer a little bit, and I'm going to apologize to everybody listening because, you know, he, he still got the white man on his brain a little bit. Y'all noticed he whispered a little bit when he said, if it ain't white, it ain't right. You better say it with your chest next time, Say bro. it with your chest. <laughs> if it white, <laughs> it ain't right. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey, go back. To his point, 2 Maccabees 15, verse 10. Bring it out. I'm going to show you something real quick. To your point, because they stand up there, really think about what they're doing over there. they saying, we cracked the deal. Okay, my thing is this. What's the what's the numbers of the people that they, y'all got to get it. But really, where are they holding hostages at? Because er, all the pictures we see, everything is bombed out and depleted. So where the hell are they holding the hostages? They bombing the hell out of every building. No, they probably I'm be I'm be straight up. They probably done bomb the damn hostages. Ain't no they ain't, hey, really looking. Did you see said, the, the picture? We ain't got no hostages to give. They right. killed them. You got them. You gonna give them back? Right. right. Read this. This is the white bear. Right? This is the devil right here. Fifteen and verse ten. Read that. This is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter fifteen and verse ten. And when he had stirred up their minds. So this is Judas Maccabees. He stirred up the mind of people. Could not can't if you read the history. This dude was exceedingly proud. He had that damn pride on him. But this is how, watch, watch how the devil think. Watch this. Read on. Come on. He gave them their charge, uh -huh. showing them their withal, the falsehood of the heathen. The what? The falsehood of the heathen. The, our people always had sense and knew that these devils lie. And what else do they do? Watch this. And the breach of oath. They do what? And the breach of oath. They break contracts over and over. They don't keep their word. This Bible says to never trust your enemy. Like his iron rusted, so it's his wickedness. He's going to lie. He's going to deal falsely. And they're going to tell you something. It's not going to be accurate. At all. It's not going to be accurate. I'm telling them people are probably dead over there. Hey. Hey, can I can I get that precept, uh, Sirach twelve and uh, ten? Since you quoted it, hey, go and get it. Let's get that real go quick. All, uh, go all the way down. This is the book of Sirach. Read chapter that. twelve and verse ten. Read. Never trust thine enemy. So the the Bible instructs you, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, never trust your enemies. No matter if he give you a little EBT, a little <laughs> section eight. You understand? He give you water to a, a village for you, brothers in them third world countries. Don't trust them. You understand? They have an ulterior motive. Read on. Mm -hmm. For like as iron rusted, uh -huh. so is his wickedness. So is his wickedness. As iron rusted, it's inevitable. It's going to rust. Yep. So is his wickedness. You understand? So is his uh, alternative plan. It's going to come to uh, get forefront. You. By then, it's too damn late. Too late. You understand? That poison already flowing through your veins. Right. Read on. Uh, read on. Verse 11. Verse 11. 
though he humbled himself uh -huh. and go crouching. So he come bearing fruits. You understand? He said, we come in peace. We come in uh, no harm. Read on. Yet, take good heed and beware of him. Always keep your eye on him. What? Pull back the curtain. What's really going on? You understand? I don't know if you want to pull back the curtain. Nah, you, you, saw, wanna, nah, you uh, definitely uh, going to see something you don't right. want to see. Right. Hey. They, they profane. I, I give you no a... Did it. <laughs> no, did it. I give you a prime example. You black woman, y'all get EBT. You get wick woman, infant, and children. What's the ulterior motive? You understand? He want the black men out of y'all life. He want y'all to raise this monstrous kids that y'all raising today. You can't do it by yourself. Um, I'm, damn, I, I hate to digress. Um, it was a sister on my job one time, right? It was two sisters. They was dating, right? They was in that uh, lesbian LGBT lifestyle, right? Uh, the sister said uh, her son, the well, the stepson was disrespecting the mom. Son, thirteen years old, he built like a uh, damn near Le LeBron James. So the butch, the butch sister say, "Hey, go stop disrespecting your mom." He look at her. What you gonna do? She said. I'll be right back. <laughs> ain't not, what you gonna do it? It's not, it's not meant for hey, these sisters. It, it, it's not meant at all. Hey, that, but you know, under Esau, they think they think they have that liberty to do what they want to do. Right. Why? Because that's the damn devil the Bible speak of. Uh, what they going on that video? Uh, it's also extraordinary the extent to which Hamas has been almost erased from this this story. Um. As we both said, going back almost to day one, uh, none of what we've seen in, in Gaza um, would have uh, happened had Hamas given up the hostages right away, put down its weapons, stopped hiding behind civilians, uh, and surrendered. Um, it has an opportunity now hey, to... This is this, this a slick devil. It, this, this, this that little dude... They used to be in the playground that would throw the rock, bust you upside your head, and hide his hand. Right. Mm -hmm. Act like he ain't do it. Watch this. Give me Psalm 55 and 20. Because this is what he's saying. What? This is the slick devil. Psalm 55 and 20. Read this is the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 20. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. He did what? He had broken his covenant. Read. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, uh -huh. but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So if Hamas puts up their weapons and stop hiding behind civilians, none of this would have happened. But you know what their ultimate goal is? Their ultimate goal is to wipe out the whole Gaza. Why? Because they want something from there. Right. Give me video number five. Let's see what the ultimate goal is. Come on. We wind it. Started from the beginning. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York with Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. President Biden called Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's policies in Gaza a mistake and urged Israel to call for a temporary ceasefire to allow in more aid. Biden's comments came in an interview hey, real quick, that— could you, could you just spin back and um, just show that picture right there, the picture that talks to Mikhail's point? Just a, just a smidgen. Just to, I, just want to, I just want to get a visual of the building. So— we're, we're, it, was, it was a little bit further up. Where are they keeping those said hostages? <laughs> Everything is bombed out. Just just look look at that. Look at that. Where the hell are the people? Where, I, that's uninhabitable. Where are the hostages? Everything is bombed the hell <laughs> out. I tell you, bro. If they say, look, I ain't got no hostages. I ain't even got nowhere to sleep. <laughs> where am I Where am I gonna keep the people at? You bomb you literally bombing that you can't even you can't get nobody in there. They bomb the hell out of everything. The hostage is under the rubble. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead, play it. Biden's comments came in an interview that aired Tuesday on the Spanish language TV network Univision. 
In his remarks, Biden highlighted the Israeli airstrike last week on an aid convoy that killed seven aid workers with the food charity World Central Kitchen, six of those aid workers international. I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that the those... Let, let, let Slurry Joe speak. Let it play. Four of three, three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore. It wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. I've spoken with everyone from the Saudis to the Jordanians to the Egyptians. They're prepared to move in. They're prepared to move this food in. And I think there's, there, there, there's no excuse to not provide for the medical and the, and, the, and, the, and the food needs of those people. They should be done now. Following the airstrike on the World Central Kitchen convoy last week, Biden called Netanyahu and warned for the first time the U.S. would be forced to change its policy if Israel did not change its policies on Gaza. Israel responded by pledging to open new aid crossings. However, the U.N. said Tuesday there's been, quote, no significant change in the volume of humanitarian supplies entering Gaza, unquote. And the Biden administration has not actually changed its policies or withheld any arms transfers to Israel. This comes hey, as hold human— on. Pause that. Read Psalms 55 and 21 again. That's the book of Psalms, <laughs> chapter 55 and verse 21. The words— of his mouth were smoother than butter. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Hey, we want Israel to cause a ceasefire. We're going to let them come in with all this food and humanitarian aid, or we're going to change our policies. Read. But war was in his heart. But she just said they ain't changing nothing yet. They ain't changing none of their policies. Netanyahu ain't changed his policy, neither did the U.S. Why? Because they one in the same. They don't want to call it. And then he said that they gonna let uh, some other countries, yo, know, um, Ishmael, come in and bring aid. They gonna bomb them too. That, exactly. So Every, how do, everybody? I, I, who, who's communicating with them? Hey, uh, you know, we not gonna drop. We ain't gonna drop bombs between three and six p.m. Ain't nobody telling them that. Yep. You know what? Yo, roll the trucks. Roll the trucks in, and they gonna bomb the hell out of them too. Hey, you remember when they uh, when they first started the war? They would tell everybody in Gaza. Evacuate to the south. Bomb the south. And they bomb the south. Then they say, hey, y'all evacuate to the north. Hey, line them they up. Bomb, bomb the, the north. north. Go to up. the school. They bomb, bomb the, school. the school. Hey, go to the go to the hospital. They bomb, bomb the, the hospital. hospital. These people, bro, they play on. Not just calling on governments to impose targeted sanctions on Israel and suspend arms transfers to press the Israeli government to ensure access to humanitarian aid. The rights group has accused the Israeli government of using starvation as a weapon of war. At least 32 people, including— Hey, hey, hey hold on, hold on, hold on, time out. They said that they accused the Israeli government of using starvation as a weapon of war. Where else have we heard about that? History lesson. The siege, 70 AD. Let's get the scripture. Let's get it. Let's, who is, and, and, and who did this? Because it's going to show you who they are. Because they're going to do the same thing that their forefathers did. Go ahead. It's the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 20. And we and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Uh -huh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. Therein too. Jump up to the part where it says, Woe unto them that are with child. Verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. So it says, woe unto them that are with child, and are giving suck, because there is going to be great distress. That great distress was a famine 
that was caused by the siege because they would not allow food in or food out to the point where we started to eat our children. And it's, they said they, they're using starvation as a tactic of war. That is what the Romans did when they seized Jerusalem in 70 AD. Who are the Romans? The Romans are Esau, Idumea, Edom. That's right. Who are the Israelis? Esau, Idumea, Edom. They are the same people. Let's play on in the video. Eight children have died of malnutrition and dehydration in northern Gaza, where famine is setting in. In the south, at least 5 percent of children under age 2 were found to be acutely malnourished. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes continue across Gaza, including dozens of strikes in Gaza City, as well as in central Gaza, where an airstrike hit a home in the New Sadat refugee camp today, killing at least 14 people, including five children. For more, we're joined by Middle East analyst Muin Rabani. He's an editor of Jadalia and host of the Connections podcast. He's a contributor to the new book, Deluge, Gaza and Israel from Crisis to Cataclysm. He was previously a senior analyst for the International Crisis Group. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us here in studio in New York. Um, I wanted to start off with a clip yesterday. Foreign minister, British foreign minister, David Cameron, um, stood with uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken at a news conference. Uh, they were at the State Department. Cameron said Britain's position on arms sales to Israel was unchanged. The latest assessment leaves our position on export licenses unchanged. This is consistent with the advice that I and other ministers have received. And as ever, we will keep the position under review. Let me be clear, though, we continue have to have grave concerns around the humanitarian access issue in Gaza, both for the period that was assessed and subsequently. And then you have uh, Blinken and um, Cameron shaking hands. Can you talk about what President Biden is saying, what's happening on the ground in Gaza, and why what the U.S. does matters, not to mention Britain yeah. saying they're continuing arms sales? Well, President Biden referred to Israeli policy towards uh, the Gaza Strip as a mistake. I mean, a mistake is when you take a wrong turn at a traffic light or perhaps when a surgeon removes the wrong kidney. But when over the course of six months, half a year, you kill tens of thousands of people with perhaps additional tens of thousands buried under the rubble and decomposing, that's not a mistake. That's a deliberate policy. And that's why Israel has been hauled in front of the International Court of Justice on charges of genocide. I think the second issue here is that words are cheap and statements are a dime a dozen. And Israel, over the decades, has learned that it can safely ignore statements, whether by U.S. or European decision makers, that are essentially playing to the gallery. Because what really matters is not what these people say, but what they do. And when the United States, United Kingdom, the European Union indicate that there is not going to be any consequences, that Israel will continue to be allowed to act with impunity, that there will be no consequences for Israel's actions, then Israel's leaders, whether Netanyahu or any of his predecessors, know that they can safely ignore statements such as the ones we've been hearing. Uh, Moeen Rabani, I wanted to ask you, the U.N. Security Council is going to make a formal decision on Palestine's bid for full U.N. membership this month. Uh, but the U.S. Uh, will likely veto this if it is uh, approved. Uh, and the hey, U.S. Pause is... Pause that. Pause that. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. The U.N. is the military portion of NATO. And it says the U.S. would veto Palestine's entrance into the U.N. But as we looked at last week, at the end of our show last week, the Ukraine was was admitted into the into NATO. And you know what's a part of NATO again? The U.N. The U.N. The military arm of of NATO is the U.N. Remember, they said, how is this going to change the balance of the war in Ukraine? 
Why? Because Ukraine is at Russia's doorstep. But they gain no leverage in having Palestine as a part of the UN. That's why they're going to veto that. Because they want that land, because they want the Ben Jiren Canal, because the Ben Jiren Canal is going to cut down in transport time. Because the Suez Canal is the busiest canal in the world, so it takes a long time to get things to and fro. There's also oil and gold in Palestine that they want. Why? Because as y'all saw earlier in the Watchmen report, Russia and BRICS is about to eradicate and eliminate the U.S. dollar. So they need something. It, this, is, this is all the game that they playing. You got something, officer? All right, y'all go back to the video. Palestine needs to negotiate statehood with Israel before it is granted statehood at, uh, by the UN. Uh, your response to this is obviously when Israel was uh, admitted into the UN, uh, the Palestinians were not asked to uh, first negotiate uh, Israel's statehood. Well, I think the U.S., um, despite several statements over the years to the contrary, has had a consistent position against Palestinian self-determination, against Palestinian statehood. It has recently voted against um, several uh, resolutions in the U.N. General Assembly reaffirming the inalienable right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. And essentially what the U.S. government is saying is that it will not support Palestinian statehood unless Israel does so. And Israel's position is crystal clear on this matter. It rejects Palestinian statehood. So in other words, um, the U.S. is subcontracting its position on Palestinian statehood to Israel and adopting it as its own. I also wanted to ask you about uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu claiming that they've had the, the date is set for the uh, for the attack uh, uh, on Rafah, but at the same time, Palestinians are being allowed to return to Khan Yunis uh, after Israel basically destroyed that city. What uh, uh, your response to that? I think that's a situation that is a little unclear because both the United States and the Europeans have come out against an Israeli ground operation in Rafah. Um, Netanyahu has claimed a date for that operation has already been set. His defense minister, Yoav Gallant, has said hey, that no hey, such... Go to video number two. Let's go to video number two. Let's see if it's unclear or not. <laughs> Uh, let's see, man. These people, bro. All right, go ahead. Video number two. GMT and Israel's Prime Minister says a date has been set for his military's ground operation in Rafah in southern Gaza. That operation is what U.S. President Joe Biden has previously called a red line. Benjamin Netanyahu says he's received a detailed update on the ceasefire talks underway in Cairo while reiterating threats of the looming offensive. Meanwhile, in southern Gaza, Israeli artillery fire has killed at least eight Palestinians in Khan Yunis. Civilians returning to the city have found little to come back to, with many of their homes destroyed. And at the International Court of Justice in The Hague, Nicaragua has accused Germany of aiding and abetting genocide being perpetrated in so Gaza. Is it, hey, pause that right there. Y'all see how these videos are lining up precept upon precept? Let's go to video number four, because they said Germany was accused of supporting genocide. Let's see what Germany says. Video number four, let's go. Come on, y'all. I gotta be in the spirit with me now. Germany denies supplying Israel with weapons of war, yet it's one of the staunchest supporters of Israel's war on Gaza. What's so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It says Israel denies giving them weapons, but is one of the staunchest supporters. 
meaning they are steadfast in their support for Israel's genocide on Gaza. Play the video. Position and what are the long-term consequences for its diplomacy in the Middle East? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the program. I'm Laura Kyle. 80 years after the Holocaust, Germany is accused of being complicit in Israeli genocide in Gaza. Nicaragua wants the International Court of Justice to order Berlin to stop military exports to Israel. German lawyers have rejected the case as baseless and biased. They say Berlin is a fierce advocate for international humanitarian law. But at the same time, for years, Germany has declared the security of the state of Israel is at its core of the foreign policy. It's very raisin debt. As world opinion turns against Israel's brutal war on Gaza, where does that leave Berlin's unwavering support for the Jewish people? We'll discuss all this with our panel of guests in just a moment, but first this report from Alexandra Byers. When Germany appeared before the UN's top court, accused of facilitating Israeli genocide in Gaza, its defense drew squarely on national history. It had learned from its past, lawyers argued. It had learned from the Holocaust. Germany is doing its utmost to live up to its responsibility vis-à-vis -vis both the Israeli and the Palestinian people. This explains one of the principles upon which our foreign policy with regard to all Middle East issues rests. Our history is the reason why Israel's security has been at the core of German foreign policy. Hey, pause that. It says, first of all, they line their ass off. They, 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 they go forth lying. But uh, let's go back to Genesis chapter 36 and verse 15. Let's see who Germany is. That's the book of Genesis chapter 36 and verse 15. These were dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Teeman. Duke who? Duke Teeman. Duke who? Duke Teeman. Teeman is Germany. Duke Teeman. So, Duke Teeman. That's Esau. Drop down to 16 again. Read 16 again. Verse 16. Duke Korah. Duke Gatum. And Duke Amalek. Duke who? Duke Amalek. I just wanted y'all to remember that Amalek, a.k.a. the so-called over there, and Duke Teeman are related. They're brothers. They're family. What family you know ain't going to stick together? What family you know ain't going to support each other? Especially when the world is given into the hands of the wicked. These people hate you and they hate everybody else. They are confederate. They are confederate and they're going to do everything that they can do to keep that land in their hands. Let's go back to the video. The need to atone for the killing of six million Jews during the Second World War has made... Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. The need to atone for the killing of six million Amalekites during World War II? <laughs> what about the hundred million that died in the Middle Passage? What about the 77 million Native Americans that they killed? What about the right. hundreds and thousands of people that they're killing daily right now? Right. Why y'all ain't atoning for that? Play on. Israel, a historic duty for Berlin. It's even described as a reason for existence. In this moment, gibt es für Deutschland nur einen Platz. At this moment, Germany has only one place, and that is alongside Israel. This is what we mean when we say the security of Israel is Germany's raison d'etre. Unsere eigene Geschichte. Our own history, our responsibility stemming from the Holocaust, makes it our everlasting duty to stand up for the existence and the safety of the state of Israel. Schultz was the first foreign head of state to visit Israel after the October 7th attacks by Hamas. Germany is the second largest arms supplier to Israel after the United States. 
It's abstained from multiple UN votes calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and intervened in defense of Israel against South Africa's charges of genocide at The Hague. But the mounting death toll in Gaza... Hey, pause real quick. Go ahead, I'll see you. Yeah, let me get one more script. Uh, because they, they just lying through the teeth. It's like, it's like making me get a damn headache because they, they come in here and they crouching themselves low in front of y'all and telling y'all, yeah, you know, um, we're sorry that Israel is bombing Palestine and we do not support it. But yet Biden then gave them 250 million. You gave them the weapons to bomb them. The same food trucks you sent over the quote unquote, you gave them the weapons, the financial back and to bomb them. You understand? Who the uh, Sirach? Uh, 12 and 15. Read that real quick. Even the damn Germanies. Everybody talking about taking Israel to the court of war. Putin dropped the video. We played it uh, early uh, last year. He said they know America and people going to say stuff. He said, so what? We don't give a damn. And guess what? We're at that point. Read that real quick. That's the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 15. Read. For a while, he will abide with thee. Verse 16. Verse 16. Uh -huh. An enemy speaketh sweetly. And with his lips. Oh, we 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 don't want to harm anyone else. We just want our uh our uh, uh hostages back. Mm -hmm. That's all we want. We're gonna send you food trucks, we're gonna stop a ceasefire. They speak in that sweet talk, read on. But in his heart, he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, yeah, when he when they come out to grab the food, we gonna nuke their ass. Nuke. You understand how they talk when they <laughs> yes, yeah, we gonna sit in a food truck. You understand? Yeah, y'all get the food, y'all good, y'all good. Go up west. Bomb the hell out. Exactly. Read on. He would weep with his eyes. Oh, oh, how could this have happened? We trusted Israel to do this and that. Israel, you gotta stop. Cap, read on. But if he find opportunity, uh huh, he will not be satisfied with blood. He not gonna be satisfied. He wants your land. He wants your riches. He wants your ethnicity. He wants your race. He wants your identity. He wants everything. He ain't satisfied with blood. Read on. Uh, verse 17. Verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, uh -huh. thou shalt find him there. You, first. He, 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 he duh. Even though it don't look like he duh, he, the America is duh. Europe is duh. They all in the midst of that. I mute my mic. Hey, real quick. Give me Psalms chapter 140. Oof. Verse 1. I'm going I'm to show you something because... They just came on there and they made up all that little backyard scuffle about, oh, yeah, you know, the this Holocaust, little dust up or whatever. And then the devil walked right past the bombs. They were shining. Y'all missed it. I know Israel, they sleep out there. Green bombs. Like, yeah, we're going we gonna to keep giving them the bombs. Why? Read that real quick. Psalms 140 and verse 1. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 140 and verse 1. Read. Mm -hmm. Deliver me, O Lord. From the evil man. From the who? From the evil man. These dudes are evil as hell. Wisdom of Solomon says that their hatred is bred into them. Yep. They are a naughty generation. Read on. Watch this. Preserve me from the violent man. From who? From the violent man. That's they make bombs and they blow stuff up. Read on. Watch this. Which imagine mischief. Which do what? Which imagine mischief. They imagine it. Micah 2 says they, they, they dream about it, and they wake up, and they go and steal. They destroy and steal. They imagine this stuff. They sit, and they dream about it. We, we counsel about matters of, um, hey, how can we help this brother out? How can we help this sister out? Like, Look, I want to go bomb this country and take what they got. That's how they mind work. That's what they imagine. Read on. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually. Or they gathered together for war. They what? They gathered together for war. That's how they got everything. They got everything by the sword. That's why you see them. They talk. They ain't even trying to hide it. Germany like, yeah, we gave them bombs. Whatever. America like, we gave them bombs. Well, why the hell are they giving Israel, who's got an iron dome, all these bombs? Because they the devil. They the devil. They the devil. They the devil. Because they got an interest over there. Yep. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. That's Let's the book go. of Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, uh -huh. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Uh huh. The residue and of the heathen. Because guess what? Ishmael that's over there getting bombed, they're the residue of the heathen. Right. The, the Most High is speaking against them in his anger too. Read. And against all Idumia. Against who? All Idumia. Idumia Edom. Read. 
which have appointed my land uh-huh. into their possessions with the joy of all their heart. It said, with the joy of all their heart, they appointed the land. They happy to take our land, right? We, with despiteful minds. With despiteful minds. The minds that imagine all kind of wickedness. The minds that dream upon mischief. The minds that set on war. We, to cast it out for a prey. To cast it out for a prey. They call into their brothers in Poland. They call into their yep. brothers in Germany. They call into all these East European so-called Khazars to come to the land. You know, take their identity. Claim you an Israelite. Claim, or, or claim you a Jew. Because they don't claim the other tribes. They just say they they the Jew. One tribe. Maybe, maybe three tribes. They, they, they claim three tribes. Because some of them say they're Kohan or Levi. That's those so-called supposed rabbis. But they lying. Read on. Verse 6. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Our land has borne the shame of the heathen. Right now in Tel Aviv, Israel, they have gay pride parades. They have borne the shame of the heathen. You know what else is going on over there? In the Holy Land, the Temple Mount, they got Ramadan going on for the heathen. And they fighting over that spot because the so-called want that spot so they can do their sacrifices and, and their abominations. They have, our land has borne the shame of the heathen. Play on. Germany under pressure, forcing it to question its unwavering support. On recent visits to Israel, the foreign minister noted the survival of Palestinians is just as important as Israel's national security. Lies. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is hell. The fact that we're stuck in this dilemma must not come at the expense of Gaza's hungry civilian population. Within Germany, police have clamped down on protests in support of Palestine. And the country officially defines so wait, any appearance. Wait, 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 wait. Do y'all see the BS? Do y'all see the BS? He, he, how, how, how can you be in support of the Palestinians must be saved? They must get fed. We must support Israel and and, and not you know despise the fact that they need to be getting food in Palestine. And then you against, you know, Palestinians in your country protesting the free Palestine. Make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense. Hey, you know what? It's not going to make sense because they liars. And they doing what they do. But look, hey, we're going to continue right after Bible verses in these commercial breaks, y'all. So Bible verses up next. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Blessed. Hey, this is your brother, Officer Mikael, and this is the Bible versus these cheaters. Let's go. Play the video. What I've noticed, I did a, I did a little study, and I did a little research. What type of study? Weekend, what type right? of study, man? Because I wanted to know, you know, who who cheating more right now? Is it the men or is it the women or... And I found out some disturbing things. Oh, tell, so, tell the people. Tell the people what you found out. I got a chart here, right? Okay. And it says that today's millennial generation of women are cheating on their husbands slash boyfriends at an alarming rate. Alarming rate. And this is unbelievable. Like, if you look at this chart, Let look see. at the blue. The that's, that's unbelievable. You hear me? Wow. Look. That's unbelievable, isn't it? They getting busy. They out here getting busy, too. So to all the fellas who, because a lot of y'all be thinking, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all got the one. 
They say the younger woman in relationships is cheating more frequently. Right. Hey, hey, y'all be thinking y'all got the one. All these young fellas out here, you be thinking you got the one. I got it. And the whole time she's a thought pocket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you hear me? But let me tell you something about women. They do it better than us. Yeah, we think we we think we so smart. We think we, think we, we so all smart. Out. We think we huh? so slick. Huh? Guess when your woman going to cheat? When you think she not? When your woman going to cheat when you think she at church? You hear me? Well, who, the pastor? But you got to ask her. What's she going to cheat with? Was you with Reverend Sheets? What you was at? Saint Mattress, <laughs> Pastor Lair, <laughs> getting a holy water, sucking a holy water out. Of <laughs> huh? who, who was you with? You was with Pastor Pillow, bitch. Oh my God! Oh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Oh my God! <laughs> hey, these women gonna cheat when you. No. These women gonna cheat when you don't think they cheat and they smarter than us. That's why a lot of violence happening out here. Because listen, since the beginning of the time, wars have been started over that thing. Over that, over that, over that guy. That yeah. thing, that thing, that, that thing. thing. That thing, that nigga. thing is a, <laughs> that thing, man. Listen, man, change. Listen, man, I done seen cold-blooded chumps, man, mm -hmm. turn into warriors about that thing. About that thing, I'm right. talking about top-flight warriors. Ah! Ah, no! Goddamn. They, goddamn nigga. I can't believe I'm going to kill everybody. Gotta, <laughs> yeah, everybody going to die. <laughs> Kill everybody in the house. Knock the everybody. fish tank over. Everything got to go. Kill a dog. All that. <laughs> the flies and all the mice. Everything get exterminated about that. That thing is dangerous, man. I'm talking about, man. I'm talking about people have exterminated the whole, everything moving in the crib got to die. The water. Oh, kill the water. Kill, I'm snap about it. Hey, that hey, thing, man. Listen. Hey, listen. And to be all way honest, man. Vagina is the, is the most dangerous drug on planet Earth. No, on some real stuff, we're going to talk, be, be straight up. Vagina dictate the pace of everything. Mm -hmm. A dude one asked me, tell me, damn, well, you know, who controls the street games? I said, that thing. Mm -hmm. That thing controls the street games. Because you know, a dude would be like, damn, you know, you growing up as a kid in the ghetto, a lot of people are like, why is this happening? Why are these little boys? I don't want my little boy to grow up. Ho, ho. A lot of times the women create the environment, and they create the mindset for When I was a young boy, I used to see older women, these beautiful women. And every time I seen them, they was getting in a drug dealer car. Or they was getting in somebody's car that had a lot of money that had things. Mm -hmm. So me being a little kid growing up, they're programming my mind that, I got to grow up and get some money. You I got to make you it happen. Want that, you want that pretty much pretty girl. in your car. So, so women dictate the whole pace because a woman to say, I don't want my son to grow up and be this and a third, but you messing with a street cat. Mm -hmm. You messing with a cat that's out here operating outside of the law, putting it down, however you know, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to judge you because everybody had a moment in life where they be living outside of the law, but you out here messing with the people that you say you don't want your son to grow up and be like. So there is a lot to unpack in this this short clip right here, right? So we're going to get straight into it. Give me Deuteronomy 23 and 17. Deuteronomy 23, 17, because it's a lot to unpack right here. Let's get that. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. There shall be no whores of the daughters of Israel, read. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So there shall be no whores of the daughters of Israel. Why shall there be no whores of the daughters of Israel? Leviticus 19 and verse 29. This is the book 19. of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Lest the land fall to whoredom, it become full of wickedness. Now, you heard the brother say that vagina, that thing, runs the streets. Why does that thing run the streets? First Edris chapter 4, verse 27. This is the book of First Ezra, chapter 4, and verse 27. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned, for women. So many. Jump up to verse 26. Verse 26. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. Uh-huh. And become servants for their sakes. Uh-huh. Read. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. For that for JJ, for that thing. They run out of their wits. They sin. They become servants. They've erred. 
least the land fall into whoredom and wickedness for that VJJ. Our people, the brothers, are out here committing adultery and cheating because they're running behind that thing. And that's why these women are able to cheat more than men because they got more opportunity. Now, it's all wicked as hell. And guess what? That's why it's being judged. That's why the land is being judged. Proverbs 6 and 32. I don't want 23. I think I want 23. I got no, you. 32. 32. I got you. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 32. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, meaning they simple as hell. Read. He that doeth it destroyed his own soul. Mm -hmm. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Read. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Uh -huh. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. So jealousy is, is the rage of a man, and he will not spare. Meaning, you're going to lose your life out here committing adultery and cheating and running behind somebody else's wife. Now, he also talked about pastors, right? So Malachi 2 and 7 says that, you know, the priest's lips should keep knowledge and you should seek the Lord his mouth. But Malachi 2 also talks about how the covenant of Levi was corrupted. So I'm making an example of just what they were talking about. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 22. Let's, let's get an example of what they was talking about. You know, past the, past the sheets. Let's see past the sheets in the scriptures. That's the book of First Samuel. Chapter 2 and verse 22. Uh -huh. Now Eli was very old right. and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel uh -huh. and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the temple. How they did what? And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door. Wait a minute. And that, and, and what they just talked about on the, on the video, that she cheating with the pastor when you think she had church? Read it again. Now Eli was very old mm -hmm. and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel uh -huh. and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So they was doing it in the scriptures just like they're doing now. And this is why this has to happen. Hebrews 13 and 4. This is, this is the cure-all. This is the cure-all. And, and, and the latter part has to happen. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge whoremongers and adulterers. How? By sending that, that, that husband or, the, or even that wife to murder your behind and take you out. That's judgment. You know what else is judgment? You being put on child support is judgment. You know what else is judgment? Them bumps that y'all out there shooting out and passing around. Deuteronomy 28.61. This is all judgment because y'all out here cheating and playing who can cheat better. No, keep it to yourself. Marriage is honorable. Read. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Mm -hmm. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed. There's no coming back from AIDS. Look, y'all might say, well, Magic Johnson got it. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. If, 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 if Magic Johnson contracted AIDS and survived, he's the only one. Why Arthur Ashe didn't survive? Arthur Ashe was just as famous just a prominent, just as African-American, why he didn't survive? Because <laughs> Magic Johnson ain't got no AIDS, y'all. Stop it. <laughs> These people lie. But look, this has been the Bible versus your cheating ass. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. All right.
right. We are seeking your assistance to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering a brief question. So you're going to scan that, pull out your phone. You're going to scan that QR code. A link is going to pop up. You're going to go to it, right? And then you're going to scroll down. You're going to select precept upon precept and fill out the survey, okay? Let us know how we're doing. We're trying to improve for y'all, okay? All right, thank y'all. Hey, shalom, man. we're almost signing Christ. Bless. My name is Captain Shem, IUIC New Orleans. Help us to grow. YouTube page, subscribe, like, share, hit the bell notification. And now it's even easier, y'all. Hey, and also part of New Orleans camp, we got the community cleanups. Cleaning up our neighborhood one at a time. What y'all waiting for? Subscribe. What are you waiting for? Subscribe and follow us on all social media accounts. We got TikTok, we got Twitter, we got Rumble, and YouTube. Make sure y'all follow our new ass new world. Shalom. All praise to the most high. All praise. Tell me if Hey, also, we got flyer missions every day and also camp videos. Check us out, I want to new world. So remember, go to our YouTube page, subscribe, like, Share and don't forget the QR code. When the QR code comes out, don't forget to take your phone out. Five, four, three, two, one. Why isn't it done? Come on, Miss Girl. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. Our UIC is about works. You can't have works without action. So right now, as the ambassadors of Christ, IUIC is conducting the first ever international Passover and showing gratitude and thanks to all Booster Club members and those who have sent in donations. From the depths of Babylon to all across the planet, there were flown out offices, captains, deacons, and the bishops once again across borders, but this time for the Lord's Passover. With over 100 men traveling across all seven continents and 24 countries, which includes the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Cameroon, Canada, Ecuador, France, Ghana, Grenada, Guyana, Hawaii, India, Jamaica, Kenya, Liberia, London, Malawi, the Midlands, the Netherlands, Germany, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Suriname, and Tijuana. Shalom, Captain Kim Uel here. Oh, in. First, we want to thank y'all for taking time to scan the QR code and rate the show. Now, we ask y'all to scan this QR code and go ahead and make sure y'all subscribe to IUIC New Orleans YouTube. Also, look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. Let's go, man. Let's get back into the show, y'all. All right, all right, all right. Hey, put up the thumbnail. Put up the thumbnail. Let's re Let's reset. A hey, tonight's show is ceasefire, Gaza, Gaza genocide, no peace in the Middle East. Why is it no peace in the Middle East? Because the people of the land ain't there. That simple. Let's go.
Let's go to video number three. Let's go to video number three. Video number three. Let's see this. We begin with breaking news out of northern Gaza, where Israel has assassinated three sons and three grandchildren of Hamas's political leader. Several members of Ismail Haniyeh's family were traveling in the El Shatik camp when their vehicle was hit. The Israeli military has confirmed it carried out the strike and says Haniyeh's three sons were Hamas operatives. Speaking to Al Jazeera, Haniyeh said the killings hey. would only harden. This devil is bold, man. He's like, yeah, we did it, and what? Now, how, how are his sons and his grandchildren going to be Hamas operatives? How does that even make sense? His sons and grandsons are Hamas operatives? Because of the statement they made earlier where they said everyone is Hamas. We got to take out everybody because we don't know who's the threat and who's not. That's how they throw their rocks and hide their hands. Play on resolve. He also said it would not affect the group's demands in ceasefire negotiations. They believe that if they kill or assassinate leaders or their next of kin, that we will abandon our people, that we will abandon our resistance. They are mistaken. This noble blood that is spilled, including my own children, will harden our resolve, make us more defiant, more adamant to continue to march on this road. The road of struggle and resistance until we win our freedom and the lawful rights of the Palestinian peoples are restored. All right, hey, we'll cross over hey. to Gaza. <laughs> Let's get Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. Let's understand who this man is that they they dealing with. Because right now they think they are in a, a jihad, what they call a holy war. So, like he said, the noble blood that has been spilled, including his children. Right now, they're looking at his children as martyrs. And this is what they say. Read that. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 16 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Read. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. He will be what? He will be a wild man. He will be what? A wild man. Because of the affliction of Ishmael, Ishmael will be a wild man. The more you bomb them, the more you kill them, the crazier they get. Ain't that what he just said? Our resolve will be hardened. Go ahead. Wake up that sleeping dragon. Wake up that sleeping dragon. Keep bombing them. The dragons of Arabia will awake. Play on. To our correspondent, Hani Mahmoud, who has the very latest for us. So, Hani, what more do we know about what happened? Yes, Darin. Well, in addition to the ongoing air strikes for the past couple hours, the Israeli military uh, pu published a statement that claiming responsibility of the assassination of the three sons of Hamas political leader along with their children. Those are the grandchildren of Ismail Haniya, the political uh, leader of Hamas. Now, this contrary to what we know so far, what we learned since the attack that these uh, okay, the I, three... I'm, I'm going to ask, the, I'm gonna ask a, um, a dumb question. Okay, let's say they, let's say they want to get these seven... I ain't, letting, I ain't letting the seven hostages go. Why the hell are you bombing the political leader's children? <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I missing something here? If I want to negotiate the return of the people safely, I'm not going to continue to bomb his family. That just doesn't make, does that, oh, does that make, am I, am I crazy here? No. Am it, I crazy, y'all? It, 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 it don't make it, no sense. He it, bombing the hell out of the people that got the hostages. It, it don't make no sense, like you say, also because at the end of the day, if you have my hostages, why would I do something that can put them in harm's way? Right, mm -hmm. put understand? them in jeopardy. Because I'm telling you straight, if I'm Hamas, you bomb my people, bro. That's a, you, you ain't got no more hostages. That's it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying they gone. Rotor footage. Uh, 
uh, Hamas leader and, and their children were in their vehicle. They were on their way to visit family members. Today marks the first day of Eid uh, after Ramadan and uh, it's the traditions across the Gaza Strip of getting uh, together in some form of a social gathering between family members and relatives. Uh, when the attack happened that it struck their vehicle, at least two missiles were fired by a drone uh, and paramedics and uh, civil defense crew on the ground described horrific scene at the moment. They were pulling out bodies from uh, the car that was looked pretty much incinerated and the bodies inside uh, the car were also incinerated. Uh, the statement... Hey, go back. Go back to Genesis 16 and 11 again. Cause I, I I I'm I'm reading the uh I'm reading the caption right here the the lower third. His name is actually Ishmael. Ishmael Anani. Yep. Read it again. It's the book of Genesis, chapter sixteen and verse eleven. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Ishmael. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Uh huh. And he will be a wild man. And he will do what? And he will be a wild man. His resolve will be hardened. And revenge, the spirit of revenge and murder. It, that's, that's what it says there. The spirit, he says Israel killed his sons in the spirit of revenge and murder. So if he has that on his heart, and he says his, 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 you know, they're going to be resolved. And you, the, you're hardening the result. Hey, all y'all are doing is waking up a wild man. <laughs> That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. And truth be told, y'all really can't handle Hamas. That's why y'all just killing everything. But let's go back to the video. By the Israeli military, a joint statement between the Israeli military and the internal security uh, talk about that. They were uh, targeted in the central area of the Gaza Strip. And uh, that's compared to what we know from the confirmed report. They were targeted in the northern western part of Gaza City. That's a shadow refugee camp. It's different than what, uh, what the Israeli military is uh, talking about. Also, the statement goes on by describing the attacks happen at the time that these uh, uh, people were, or the three uh, People were conducting conducting terrorist acts, contrary to what we know also so far as they were in their vehicle, visiting family members uh, on the first day uh, of their age. Okay, Hani, thank you for that update from Rafah. Well, let's find out more about what the Israelis had to say about this and bring in Rory Challenge, who's joining us from Occupied East Jerusalem. So now there is confirmation, uh, Rory, from Israel. Tell us more. Yeah, the confirmation came in the last hour, and it's come from a, a joint statement by the military and Shin Bet, which is the internal intelligence agency. And what this statement says is that the IDF and the ISA, that is uh, Shin Bet, eliminated three Hamas military wing operatives in the central Gaza Strip. Now, the strike was directed uh, by military and Shin Bet intelligence, and it was carried out by Israeli aircraft. It says that the three men that were taken out in this strike were Amir Hinia, uh, a cell commander in the Hamas military wing, Mohammed Hania, a military operative in Hamas, and Hazam Hania, also a military operative in Hamas. This is all according to uh, the IDF, the, the Israeli military. And it says that they are the sons of hey, Ismail Hamir, the chairman. I'm going to defer to you, Officer Micah. Because do they look like they were in the military? No, he looked like he like he was in school or something. This guy like he probably run a gas station, <laughs> and that guy like he's an IT person. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, I mean, but, I'm looking but, at the pictures, but they're military operatives. Yeah, though. yeah, they mil they militant. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. Hey, go to video number seven. Video number seven. Well, in occupied East Jerusalem, worshippers there have gathered for Eid prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. Our correspondent Imran Khan was there. 
Eid prayers are now over and it has been a subdued atmosphere here at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound despite the thousands of people that have actually come to visit and there's two reasons for that. Firstly, the restrictions. You can probably just see the police over there. They're checking the IDs of young men. The restrictions are uh, this. Men over the age of 60 are allowed to come. Women over the age of 50 are allowed to come. No one, uh, very few people rather, from the occupied West Bank have been allowed to come here. But still, thousands of people have arrived. They've given their prayers. They've offered their prayers for the people of Gaza. That's the real reason that things are so subdued here, that the atmosphere isn't like it would be normally. People were hoping for a ceasefire. There was supposed to be a Ramadan ceasefire. That ceasefire didn't come to pass. Those negotiations are still ongoing and the people here are hoping that there might be, there could be, they're hoping for a breakthrough in the coming days. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera, the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, occupied East Jerusalem. So, as you can see, at the Alaska Mosque, this is the Temple Mount. This is what, what they say is the most holy point. This is where the, the temple was supposed to be. This is land that these so-called want so they can build, their, they can rebuild their temple, right? <clears throat> so it says this, that Ishmael was there and they were praying for a ceasefire at the end of Ramadan, but they had restrictions and only men over 60 and women over 50 could come. Because they figure those people are old and can't do nothing, right? They don't want any protest or anything to jump off. But it just shows you how the Most High is stirring up everything over there. They were praying for, for, for a ceasefire at the end of Ramadan. And you know what happened at the end of Ramadan? Three of the leaders of Hamas' children got killed at the end of Ramadan. That's that's what happened. And and, and more people are, are, are still dying, getting bombed on the West Bank of, of, of Gaza. It, it, there's no ceasefire coming because these people are going to eradicate you. That's, that's their goal. Their goal is to eradicate you. They don't love you. They don't love themselves. I mean, you think about it, Ishmael. They look at you just like they look at themselves. You're nothing in their eyes because they understand you don't have a God, just like they understand they don't have a God. Look at what they did to God's children. You think they really care about you? They displaced God's children. They raped, robbed, and murdered God's children and stole their identity and their land and tried to give them Cedric Boisier as their God. And you think somehow that they actually care about you. They don't give a damn about you. They don't care about you. Uh, what's the next video I got? Number nine? Go to number nine. Yep, go to number nine. This week, the prospect of some form of armed confrontation between Israel and Iran and possibly the US, therefore, and Iran, well, that seems to have become a lot more likely. We've, of course, seen Iran, uh, the bombing, sorry, of Iran's embassy in Damascus by Israel. What does it all mean? Is a global, a, a regional conflagration more likely? Well, we've got no better person to speak to you, frankly, than the brilliant uh, Twitter party, who is uh, an American Iranian commentator, the co-founder and executive vice president of the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft and an author of three books, I believe, on the question of Iran and the US um, and general relations. Uh, Twitter, it's a great pleasure to see you. How are you doing? Pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much for having me. So, Let's just get straight into it. Is a confrontation, an armed confrontation with Iran, inevitable, given, as we saw, for example, the strike on, on the embassy in Damascus by Israel? 
It is certainly not inevitable, but it is unfortunately increasingly likely. There definitely are ways to prevent a further escalation. And many of those cards are in the hands of, the, of Biden, but we have seen that Biden has not been prioritizing de-escalation for the last six months. And the last signals coming out of the White House suggest that he's not looking or is actually not serious about the escalation this time around either. But inevitability, I would absolutely not say. If you just take a look at what's been going on for the last few years, the Israelis have hit Iran numerous times and the Iranians have actually not responded, partly because they're playing a long game. They know that they're in a weaker position right now and they're, um, uh, they are in a confrontation with Israel, but it is not in their interest to actually have a confrontation right now. It is in the interest, at least as Netanyahu defines itself, for Israel to have it, for Israel to expand the war, uh, to prolong the war. And this is a key problem in Biden's approach. He has linked his policy as if he hitched himself to what Netanyahu does. But Netanyahu is not looking to end this conflict. He's not looking even to get the hostages released, just see what he did yesterday uh, with the uh, assassination of the children and grandchildren of one of the Hamas officials. Hey, Paul, that <laughs> He said he's not even looking to get the hostages released. Do you see what he did with the bombing of the children of the Hamas leader? He's not even looking to get the hostages released. That whole they have hostages is just a ploy, a tactic, a cover-up while they carry on with their real agenda. But guess what? It's all of the Lord. Proverbs 21 and 2. It's all of the Lord. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 10. Two. Verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Verse 1. Verse 1. The king's heart it. is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whatsoever he will. So the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. All of this is of the Most High. The Most High is turning all of this, he's, he's making them do what he wants to do because he is gathering the host. He's mustering their armies. Watch this. Go to uh, 2nd Edges 15. 2nd Edges 15 and start at verse 28. No, start at verse 27. It's the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 15 and verse 27. For now... Are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east, mm -hmm. where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. It says, all they which hear them may fear and tremble. You know how they're going to hear them? Allah Akbar. Y'all know when y'all hear somebody say, Allah Akbar, y'all know they about to blow something up. Y'all get scared, y'all, in fear, y'all tremble. Read. Also, the Carmanians. Also, the Carmanians. The Carmanians are the Iranians. Now, they bombed the leader of Hamas's children and killed them. The leaders of Hamas are Ishmael. They also bombed the uh, the Iranian embassy in Damascus and and killed another one of Iran's top leaders. Iran is the Carmanians. So read that part again. Also, the Carmanians uh -huh. raging in wrath. Raging in wrath. Because you've been, ever since Soleimani, they've been waving the red flag of doom. They just have not moved on y'all yet. Why? Because they're waiting on the perfect opportunity to strike. But read on. Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the woods. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. When it says they shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians, it's talking about Israel. Right. It's talking about Israel. They're going to waste that portion of the land. And it's all by the doing of the Most High because he's in control of all of this. Daniel 4 and 17. That's the book of Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. This matter is by the decree of the watchers. This matter. 
what we seeing right now is by the decree of the watchers. Read. And the demand by the word of the Holy One uh -huh. to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rule it in the kingdom of men. All and of this is so that you know that the Most High is ruling in this kingdom right here, right now. Yes, the world was given into the hand of the wicked because the Most High gave it to him. But guess what? Taking it back now. You got something? Yes, sir. Let's get Psalm chapter 52, start at verse 1. I'm going to read 1 through Bring 5. Bring it out. To write, write on lamb back on what Officer Mikael would bring it out. Yes, sir. That's the book of Psalms, chapter 52 and verse 1. Read. Why boasted thou thyself in the mischief? Because that's what Esau doing right now. Mm -hmm. That's what they doing. They proud about it. They ain't looking for no damn. They ain't looking to get nobody released. They bombing. They're going to set up their resort like they said because they're going to boast themselves in mischief. Right? Let's see what the Lord going to do, though. Read on. Watch this. Almighty man. Uh -huh. The goodness of God endureth continually. They don't understand this. <laughs> they don't. This is, they, they, they do not get this. They yeah, got as no. cold oil and drugs. They don't think that there's a God. They think they, go, they think they got away. Read on. Watch this. Thy tongue devises mischief. They, they, they sit talking to you, all this wickedness. Come on. Like a sharp razor. Working deceitfully. They operate in deceit. They get a paycheck to be deceitful. Read and watch this. Thou lovest evil more than good. They do what? Thou lovest evil more than good. They love to do wickedness. Read. And lying rather than to speak righteousness. It's not in them. They soul that is, it, it is uh, lifted up in them, it's not right. They don't do right. Read. See, law. Thou lovest all devouring words, uh -huh. O thou deceitful tongue. Watch this. Read this. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. Temporary. Forever. Ooh, that's talking about Esau. Forever. God ever. said he going to get him. All we got to do is keep the commandments. Finish it out. He shall take thee away. He shall do what? He shall take thee away. Oh, praise. That's going to make that make my teeth white. He said he going to yes, take the red bastards smooth away. Read. And pluck thee out of thy dwelling place. Read. And root thee out of the land of the living. He, he said Ooh. he going to take them up out of hell. Hey, Selah means so be it. So be it. Amen. That's right. Woo. Hey, go back to the video. Something you do when you actually want to advance a deal that gets the hostages released. Yet Biden has hitched his policy to Netanyahu, even though they have very different interests. I mean, so about look of it and think, this is kind of wacky behavior by the Israeli state in that there's been six months now of this murderous onslaught against Gaza. But I mean, that's been a strategic defeat for Israel in lots of ways. Public opinion is drastically shifting against them in the states that they need support from, armed support, diplomatic and political support from. Um, and they haven't actually defeated Hamas, which after six months of dropping the equivalent of several nuclear bombs on an area the size of East London, so, so why a lot of people go, well, why would they want to ex that expand that into a regional war? Or is it because of the strategic defeat that they seem to be suffering? I, I think you put your finger right at the end. It's, it's the danger of them losing in Gaza that increases the likelihood of them trying to expand the war in order to hey, be so, able to... Oh, hold on, hold on. I need y'all to actually hear what they are saying. Despite them bombing out Gaza like this to the point of they're being accused of genocide. They saying they getting their ass whooped over there. Why? Because Ishmael is a wild man. Yeah, that's it's urban warfare, guerrilla warfare over there in Gaza, and Ishmael tearing their behind up over there. But guess what? All of this is for you, Israel. Yes, sir. And this is what you got to do. Zephaniah two. Bring it out. Zephaniah chapter two, start at verse one. Sir. It's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, and verse 1. Uh -huh, read. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. So we must gather ourselves together. We cannot be ditty distracted. We can't be confused by Candace. We can't be uh, lost in these sports. We got to focus on, thus said the Lord, repent according to the Bible. And get ourselves right with the Lord. Read. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. Hey, put them up on the screen. Oh, why y'all showing them to me? Showing them to the people. Read that part again. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, uh -huh. before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. 
before that right there happens, that mushroom cloud. Beautiful. Right. Read. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Read. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, mm -hmm. which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So if you seek meek, meekness and righteousness, it may be that you be hid, meaning protected by the angels in the day of the Lord's judgment. Put that one on the screen. When that happens, you're going to walk through that fire if you're keeping the commandments. Read. For Gaza shall be forsaken uh -huh. and Ashkelon a desolation. Read. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday. Uh -huh. And Ekron shall be rooted up. Y'all starting to see that right now because Gaza is being destroyed as we speak. And, and, and Ashdod is Tel Aviv. Ekron is right there. Next to uh, Asdod. Keep reading. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast. The seacoast is Palestine. Read. The nation of the... How you say that? The nation of the... Cherethites. 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 Excuse me. Cherethites is going into so-called Amalek again because that word means those that wear black. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Talking about you, Amalek. Read. The nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, uh -huh. the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. Read. And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottage for shepherds and foes for flocks. Read. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Uh -huh. They shall feed thereupon. And the houses of Eshkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. So the Lord shall visit us and turn away our captivity. And he's going to bring us back into the land and give us our land back. And guess what's going to happen when we get our land back? Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verse 1 and 2. Get it. Let's go. Let's see what's going to happen when the Lord brings us back into our land. That's the book of Isaiah. Chapter 14 and verse 1. Uh -huh. For the Lord would have mercy on Jacob. He's going to have mercy on the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read. And will yet choose Israel uh -huh. and set them in their own land. Set us back in our own land. Put that on the screen. Put that on the screen. He's going to set us back in our land. Now, on the map, this little strip right here is not Israel. Israel is far bigger than that, far more vast than that. That's right. But for now, for now, he's going to put us back in our land, read. And set them in their own land. And uh -huh. the strangers shall be joined with them. The strangers. Some of those strangers are going to be Amalek. Some is going to be Ishmael, read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Uh -huh. And the people shall take them. And bring them to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And shall they take them captives whose captives they were. We were captives to, to, to uh, Esau. We were captives to Ishmael. We're going to take them. All praise to the Most High. All praises to the Most That's High. Right. Go to Joel. Let's go to Joel 3. It's the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah in Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of decision. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. When it says he will plead with them there for his people, he ain't begging. He's going to plead with fire and destruction. That's right. Read. Whom they have scattered among the nations uh -huh. and parted my land. They parted the land in 1948 when they came in and took the land from Ishmael and put them in the West Bank and put them on the Gaza Strip. Read. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine. So-called Amalek funded 
Amalek, excuse me, so-called Jewish Amalek, that's, that's who they really are. They funded the transatlantic slave trade. They were the ones that were buying us on Wall Street. They were the ones that were in the Confederate Army. They were the ones that were under the hoods of the KKK. That was Amalek. Right. The so-called Jewish man. The red devil that the Bible speaks of. They did this to us. Put it on the screen. Bring it out. They did this. Roll all those pictures. Let's go. <coughs> Look at that. Look at the background. That's Amalek in the background. They funded the slave ships. J.P. Morgan and Chase was Amalek. Whitney, Hancock Whitney, that was Amalek. These people funded the slave ships. They, they insured them. Still to this day, they are the ones that are insuring those so-called rappers that are out here doing the drill music and killing each other while Amalek is getting paid off of that. Right. Finish reading the scripture. Y'all can drop the pictures. And so they girl for wine that they might drink. Yay. And what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Tyree and Zidon are African nations. But guess what? Tyree and Zidon dwelt, dwelt in the land of Lebanon. Lebanon is also on that sea coast. Read. And all the coast of Palestine. Uh huh. Will you render me a recompense? Are you going to try to get revenge? Read. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? That, that, that return of that recompense is happening right now. It's happening right now. That's why there will be no peace in the Middle East, because God is recompensing them. Read. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Uh -huh. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. The Africans and the Arabs got together and sold us to the so-called white man. Read. That ye might remove them far from their border. Uh -huh. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabines, Sabines, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. Keep reading. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your proning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So... Because the Most High is gathering all nations into the valley of decision. All nations are going to come into war. That's why it says beat your plowshares in the spears. Meaning turn, turn your farming utensils into weapons. Have not we seen the farmers protesting? Read. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, uh -huh. and gather yourselves together round about, thither, Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Read. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put so, ye hey, no, that, that, stop right there. The valley of Jehoshaphat is the valley of decision. This is where Armageddon will take place. All nations are being drawn to this place right here, right now. That's why this is happening in, in Gaza, in Jerusalem. And in Iran, all of this is by decree of the watches. All of this is at the hands of the Most High. And Israel, y'all need to repent. Right. Y'all need to repent and keep God's commandments so that you are able to walk through that fire. So look, this has been another episode of Precept Upon Precept. What I want y'all to do, Israel, is make sure y'all subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube page, share our videos, like our videos, comment, work the algorithm. There's the QR code. There's the QR code. Take your phones out and scan the QR code. Scan it now. Scan the QR code, y'all. 
And after y'all scan that QR code while y'all still got y'all phones out, y'all go ahead and scan the QR code again. Another QR code. And this time, y'all going to rate the show. Let us know what we're doing. Let us know how we can get better. Help the broadcast team. And look, while y'all helping the broadcast team when y'all scanning this QR code, y'all can also go to PayPal and donate to IUIC New Orleans. How do you donate to IUIC New Orleans via PayPal? Is that IUIC.NewOrleans at IsraelUnite.org. Hey, or y'all can mail it to us. I don't have the P.O. box, but hey, the best way to do it is PayPal. Now, if you want to donate to your local school, you can drop that in the arms box, or you can donate to your local school via PayPal. Also, 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 make sure y'all are donating to the Booster Club because the Booster Club, hey, y'all just saw it, right? Y'all just saw Worldwide Passover. That was by that was done by y'all donations to the Booster Club. So let's keep it going. Let's stay in the spirit. You can donate to the Booster Club at iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. Also, make sure y'all give into the land fund because we want to come together and get land so we ain't got to worry about no heathens calling in anonymous with Fake BS phone calls about terrorists in the building, giving us a curfew, telling us how loud we can be, how late we can stay. We ain't got to worry about none of that once we get our own land, y'all. So donate to the land fund. You can donate to the land fund via PayPal at Israel at IsraelUnite.org. Make sure y'all label it land. So look, hey, we appreciate y'all for staying with us. Uh, again, this is the Late Show Thursday nights. This has been Precept Upon Precept. I'm Officer Mikael. Officer Micah. Officer Iran. Officer Malachi. And with that, we say Shalom. Shalom. Hey. Judo blood. I see. Love. I see mansions in the kingdom. In the I see hunters slaying demons. Damn. I see fire on this earth on this coming earth. down like you were shaming. I shame. see prophets rising up, rising prophesying scriptures cut. I see Christ, he coming back. Coming back. And he black, he look like us. Like I, see I see it, I see it, I see it.